Hello. Okay. So, how long did you go she for? She did manage to go for 9.20. Good for her. The last few tracings are terrible. She was actually trying to jog that last little bit. Yeah. Uh, heart rate a little bit below target, 152. That was pretty close to the last time. She had a small amount of retrosternal chest pain that was, just came out of the blue and went yep. away. This looks great. Looks great, eh? Yep. Good. Keep it up. Okay. All right. So I don't Good. have to lose 70 pounds? Well. I mean, is is being overweight a risk to your health? The answer is yes. It is. Is it a huge risk? No. You are far better being, if you will, fat and fit than, I need another alliteration for skinny. Skinny and unfit. See, that's the word. Fat and fit works. Skinny and I need some. Unhealthy. Well, no, but it doesn't. Skinny it doesn't, and un. It doesn't rhyme. Oh. I'm looking alliteration. Oh, you know, well fat, then. Fat, fit, skinny. Sedentary or. Skinny, sedentary. I don't know. No. Anyway, anyway. So, so, we don't so, mean. So, so you're far better off being overweight and in good shape than being skinny and in lousy shape. And a lot of people, unfortunately, we just talked about this in the office, they will diet themselves down to being skinny and they look good. Uh, but they're out of shape. And that person is at a higher risk than somebody like yourself. So then I'm in shape. You are in good shape, yes. I'm in good shape. Yes. Good. You're cardi physically fit. You're in good shape. Okay. Body mass wise, I'm big, the shape than... is not ideal. Round is a shape. Yes, it is. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. That's not an ideal shape. Uh, you know, there's no question, unfortunately, that being overweight carries with it certain risks. I mean, diagnostic tests are harder because you're having to do those diagnostic tests through the fat, and so they're not as accurate. Being overweight is increased risk of developing breast cancer, increased risk of developing bowel cancer, increased risk of having diabetes, hypertension. So, I mean, there is, there's no question that being overweight does carry risk with it. But I think you have to look at it in the grand scheme of things. Uh, you have to look at degree of risk. I mean, there's no, so it's not fair to somebody who is heavier than is good for them uh, to, you know, imply that the that the element of risk is the same for each of these things. You know, being out of shape, being overweight, being a smoker, being having high blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, uh, diabetes, all those things. The r degree of they're all risks, but the degree of risk changes substantially. So the, I say, you know, the degree, the risk associated with smoking is huge. The risk associated with having diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, you know, degree of abnormality makes a difference. But, you know, it's, it's there and it's, it's, it's significant. The degree of risk associated with being older, being, being heavier than is good for you, um, is, is a risk there. And it's, it's a lesser risk again. So I think that anybody would always be better off being slenderer. But the fact of the matter is that losing weight is really difficult. It's it's horrible. Yeah, and then you gain is. more. It is. Every time uh, I try and lose, I've always ended up bigger. Times. And most of us, and I say most of us look like our parents. You know, if you have overweight parents, you're going to tend to be overweight because there is something. I mean, yes, overeating, lack of exercise, predisposes people to being overweight. But a lot of people are kind of genetically programmed to be skinny yeah, or being overweight. My parents were thin and slender. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, well having, having, having a big gut, that's more diet than somebody who's just generally overweight. Right. Uh, I mean, th th this lady is more generally overweight than you, where most of your weight is, is in your gut. Yes. Uh, he doesn't that, gain it anywhere else. And, that's, and that's, that's, more, well, that's, that's more of a guy thing. You know, guys tend to be shaped like apples. Women tend to be shaped more like pears. Mm -hmm. And the risk... Of the, and if you want to get fancy about it, the risk of, of fat and heart disease depends on where the fat is. Mm -hmm. Fat in your belly is at a higher risk than fat in your butt. Uh, it's a different type of fat. And the way it's metabolized is different. So I tell people who are, who are heavier than is good for them, I like using that phrase rather than fat, it's a kind of carries negative connotations. Um, Anyway, if people are heavier than is good for them, what I, what I tell them is, I say, I appreciate losing weight is very difficult. What I tell people is they need to be honest with themselves. You need to be eating as healthy as you can, appropriate foods, appropriate quantities, appropriate pattern of eating, not one meal a day versus three meals a day. 
and people need to be physically active, they need to be physically fit. And if that combination of things helps bring your weight down, great. If you're eating healthy and you're exercising regularly and your weight doesn't come down, well, no, sorry, but at least you will be fitter. And it's far better being overweight and fit than being overweight and not. So you be honest with yourself, you're doing the best you can, and otherwise, you know, don't, you know, don't give yourself too much grief that you don't look like Angelina, Angelina Jolie. Whoever she is, I'm Nancy today, and I think I'm just perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so you are, you are, you are in good shape. You know, I said, be honest with yourself about the about the diet and the exercise, and otherwise, you know, don't. So don't when you ask me if I exercise regularly, mm -hmm. like I swim a lot. Yep. I don't swim. I f I have problems with my SI joints now, mm -hmm. and my hip joints, mm -hmm. and I guess there's a lot of arthritis in there or something. Well. Mm -hmm. The joint is not in the socket correctly, according to the physiotherapist, yeah. which is probably from being overweight and too much weight on it, or maybe it's yeah. the arthritis. Well, it does. It does. That's not the thing that weight does. It does put more wear and tear because of gravity. Mm -hmm. the weight, yeah. So I don't swim hard laps because if I do, my legs hurt or my hips yeah. hurt. But people have demonstrated that actually, you know, the only advantage of intensity of exercise is that you don't have to do it for as long a period of time. If you look at distance, so if you look at somebody, it's interesting, if somebody goes for a, they've done it more with uh, walking and running, so if somebody goes for a five kilometer walk versus a five kilometer jog. A five kilometer jog you can do in maybe you know, half an hour. A five kilometer walk will probably take you maybe an hour or two hours to do. If you do that, those people will probably both gain about the same degree of physical fitness from that. The advantage of doing it faster is they get it over with faster. So the distance is probably the distance is probably the more almost the more important thing. So if somebody's not capable of, of really pushing themselves because of these limitations, um, that doesn't mean you're going to not be the same benefit. It just means it's going to take you longer to get the same benefit. So I tell people that. In general, I say people should vigorously try to vigorously exercise for 30 minutes, 5 and 7 days. That's kind of the way I phrase it. If you exercise for 15 minutes, 5 out of 7 days, versus an hour daily, 5 out of 7 days, yeah, I mean, the longer exercise, the better. But you know, if you're if you're you know swimming that distance, and I think it would take it well as you're talking here, you know, you're actually in pretty good shape. But it is the idea of trying to do it most days, if not every day. Okay? Okay. Good. Thank All you right. very much. You're very welcome.